Hello and good evening CSI 158 section 841 and 847 students for the spring 2014 semester at Anne Arundel Community College. Today's Packet Tracer tutorial is going to be on static NAT and this is Packet Tracer activity 11.2.1.4. In fact this is the last chapter in the Networking Essentials text and so let's go ahead and jump right in. This is a very straightforward exercise and a very quick exercise, probably one of the quickest packet tracers that we're going to do. As you can see, you've got your scenario here where we have two clients, a laptop and a PC, and they're coming in over the internet into what we'll go ahead and say is an enterprise network here. And server one is a web server, and so we're going to try to view the web page as well as ping server one. And so the first thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and check to see and make sure that right now we are unable to do so. So if I were to try to pull my web browser up and type in 64.100.50.1 and click go, you'll see that nothing's happening right now. And so let me try to ping 64.100.50.1 and as you can see we can't ping that outside address. We're going to destination host unreachable. And so from the laptop, we should get the same results. 64.100.50.1. And no, no success here. And lastly, let's go ahead and ping 64.100.50.1. And we should end up with a very similar result, if not an identical result. And as you can see, there you go. The destination is unreachable. So what's happening is the router is returning back a destination unreachable message to us. All right. So let's go ahead and close this down. From PC1, can we ping the R1 serial 000 interface? And let's go ahead and check and see what that is. So we'll go from user exec into privilege exec and do a show IP interface is brief and this is usually one of the quickest commands you can run to see which interfaces are up what the IP addresses are in the interfaces and what the status is and so there's the 209.165.201.2 so let's see if I can ping make sure I can remember the address here make sure I can ping that address so I'm going to go ahead and ping 209.165.201 whoops 201.2 Okay, so we can ping the interface, the outside interface, on router 1. So let's close that down. So, so far, so good. So we're going to view R1's routing table and running config. So we want to make sure that there are no commands that refer to NAT. And we also want to ensure that there are no entries referring to the IP addresses used by PC1 or Laptop 1. So let's go ahead and pull router one up here. And if we do a show run, you can see that there are no commands that relate to NAT, right? And let's go ahead and do a show IP NAT translations. And as you can see, there are no translations being performed right now. So we're going to go ahead and configure static NAT. So Again, one of the key differences between static NAT and dynamic NAT is that static NAT is a one-to-one -one relationship. And so we're going to have one inside global address that is associated with a single, I'm sorry, correction. We're gonna have one, uh, we're gonna have one inside local, yeah, I think I said inside local. So one inside local address that is related to, or I should say associated with one inside global address. And so here's how we're gonna do that. And again, this is a pretty quick static NAT setup. We're simply gonna be creating a static NAT setup so that these IPs, the inside global and the, out, I'm sorry, the inside local and the outside local 
are set up for NAT. And so let me drop this down a little further so we can see those. All right. So configure static NAT. So refer to the topology and create the NAT translation to map server one's inside address to its outside address. All right. So we're going to go from privileged exec mode into global config mode. And we're going to do IP NAT inside. And this is where we're going to type in the source static. And if I do a question mark, you can see it's going to ask you for the inside local IP, which in our case here is going to be 172.16.16.1. Remembering that inside local address is that RFC 1918 address usually. Those are the IPs that are being used on the inside of your network. And so the outside address is going to be the inside global address. And in our case here, we're going to be looking at 64.100.50.1. And so that's the full statement there. IP NAT inside, source static. And then I type in my inside local address and my inside global address. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. And you'll see here that our completion percentage jumped to 50 out of 100. And so that was the first step that we needed to complete. And so that's it. So if I had, a, let's say I had another server that was 16.2 and it was, we were gonna use the inside local address of 172.16.16.2 and that's our RFC 1918 address. And then I was gonna use an outside, I'm sorry, an inside global address of 64.150.2. And so that's the statement for that and again, static is one to one so if I had a third web server maybe that I put out there I would use that statement now the key thing to remember is these inside global addresses I need to make sure that I have these addresses available and typically as a service provider or as a, an enterprise you do not have an unlimited number of inside global addresses and those are the publicly routable publicly reachable addresses on the internet so if I had a fourth web server I would simply put that statement in and again I think you get the picture here a fifth web server and then I would create another static entry and so static NAT is very easy to configure very simple to configure and again it's gonna come down to scalability right because if you've got hundreds and hundreds of web servers that you're deploying chances are you may want to use dynamic NAT so that you don't end up having to manage literally hundreds of these statements and so as you can see our completion percentage is now dropped so I am gonna go ahead and clear these guys out so we'll do no and then we'll get three and I'm holding down the uh, when I when I'm backspacing here I'm actually holding down uh, the arrow key, but if you do control A, that'll throw you right back to the beginning of the line. So again, let me pull up five. Whoops, there's five. Just control A real quick and then type in what you wanted to type at the beginning of the line. All right, so we've removed those erroneous statements. Again, just to prove a point that this is how if you added an additional web servers and you wanted those servers to be able to be reached from the internet, this is how you would set up the static NAT and again, our completion percentage is now back to 50 out of 100. Okay, so now that we have the IP NAT inside source static statement configured properly for 172.16.16.1, which is the inside local address, to now be able to use the inside global address of 64.150.1. So we're going to go ahead and now we're going to make that statement, we're going to activate that statement on each of the interfaces that are on R1 here. So we have a serial 000 on the outside, and that takes us to the internet or our service provider. And then we have our inside address, and this is probably the default gateway. So let's do a do show IP interface brief. And as you can see, our gig 00 IP address is 172.16.16.14 right and that is our inside interface and so here's what we're gonna do we're gonna go ahead and type in int gigabit ethernet 00, zero IP right NAT inside because that is the inside interface and so 
when that packet goes to leave that inside interface, it's going to know that we're going to end up natting that IP. And so let me go ahead and change to serial 000. Whoops. Serial 000 and type IP NAT outside. Right? And you'll see that our completion percentage is going to increase to 100. And so that's so that on that interface, when someone's trying to get to 64.100.50.1, that interface knows that it's performing NAT, right, or network address translation. So the exercise is complete, but let's go ahead and take a look at what we've got configured so far. So let me type in, I'm going to save my configuration, always a good idea. And if we do show run, you can see that on the inside interface, we have the IP NAT inside statement. And on the outside interface, we have our IP NAT outside statement. So right now, if I do show IP NAT translations, you'll see that we actually have something entered into this table now, and it's the NAT that we had set up earlier. Right, and so you can see the inside global, right, is the publicly reachable and routable IP address, and the inside local is going to be that RFC 1918 address that's typically used in enterprise networks. Okay, so now that we've got our NAT configured, uh, we're going to go ahead and do some tests really quick. And now let's verify and let's see from PC1 with the web interface here, what happens when I go to 64.150.1? All right, and now we see server 1, welcome to server 1. How about a ping command? What if I try to ping 64.100.50.1? All right, it's working brilliantly. And that's from our PC. Let's check from our laptop now. So 64.100.50.1. All right, we can hit the web server without a problem. And let's do a ping. And it's working brilliantly. All right, fantastic. So we've taken a look at all of our connectivity. We can hit the web server so our NAT statement is set up. We see it with the show IP NAT translation. So what if I do show IP NAT statistics? You can see here that total translations are at 11. So one static, 10 dynamic, and 10 extended. The outside interface is serial 000, lists our inside interface. We've got 23 hits so far, 10 misses, and this was from our previous ping commands in our previous attempts to hit the interface and that, or hit that IP address. Um, expired translations none and no dynamic mappings, right? So we're doing static NAT. And so again, if I do a show run and let's go down to the static statement, which is right here, IP NAT inside source static, and then you put your inside IP address, your inside local, and then you do your inside global. And that is static NAT. All right, I hope you found this video tutorial helpful. And best of luck, and I will see you this week. Have a great night.